Today, I want to talk to you in my series. I want to continue my teaching my series on the leading of the Holy Spirit. I want to talk to you about the leading of the Holy Spirit. Today, I want to talk to you about something very powerful. How to stop stressing and follow God's voice. How to stop stressing and follow God's voice. Will you turn your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 13 and verse 8? And we're going to read a story that will serve as a foundation for our, for, for our teaching today. And, be, you know, um, before I step into the story, let me just start with this. The other day, a very successful businessman walked up to me, and with very teary face, he, was, he had fears, he has doubt on how he was going to sustain his business, he was going to be able to pay salaries, he was just so confused on what the future will hold for him. And, you know, when, when he came to me, it just really reminded me of, you know, the pressure today. There is a lot of uncertainty Mothers are concerned that how long will my kids be at home and I'm doing homeschooling? Will these kids be able to really develop mentally if this continues for a while? Others are asking, when will a vaccine be produced? People are wondering, I have debt that we have to pay as an organization. Will this debt be sustained? Some people are really asking, you know, will I be healthy? Will my loved ones be healthy? Will my aged parents be healthy? And they're just have, having those questions. So there is a lot of stress because as we hear of all the evil going on, the riot, the, you know, the riot, the sickness, the, 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 the death going higher, people are saying what's going on. When you hear the fact that some kids have to resume school because of exams, people are like, you know, almost like terrified what's going on. And I want to say to you, so there's a lot of stress building up today. Business people are concerned. This, that my stuffs are coming in here. Hope they will not cut the virus. All we're trying to do is make money. We're not trying to spread the virus. Pastors are confused. That, well, when we gather together physically, what's, going to, what, what's it going to be like? Because now the economy is open. People are asking a lot of questions. Have you tried to take a public transport before and you're just wondering when someone sneezes beside you, you're like, oh my God, hope she doesn't have something. Or have you stepped into an Uber before and for some reason you're just very careful in that Uber? Or have you had to share a working space before and you heard that the other colleague that was here yesterday, yesterday did not come today because he was sick. All those things put up a lot of pressure on our system. And that's what I want to share to you from God's word today. How to stop stressing and to begin to follow God's leading and God's voice. First Samuel chapter 13 and verse 8. The Bible says this, referring to Saul. The Bible says, and he, Samuel was, is a person here, and Samuel tarried seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. And Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. And Saul said, Bring me a burnt offering. Saul was the king of Israel, and a peace offering. And he offered the burnt offering. And it came to pass, as soon as, watch this now, as soon as he had made the end of the offering of the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came, and Saul went out to meet him, that he must salute him. And Samuel said, What hast thou done? And Saul said, because I saw the people were scattered from me, and thou hast not come within the days appointed, which is not true, because it came on the last day. He says that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Mishmak. What did, what did he say? Therefore said I, the Philistines will come down upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication to God. So I forced myself thereof and offered the burnt offering. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now will the Lord have established your kingdom upon Israel forever, but the Lord, but the kingdom shall not continue. It says, but the kingdom shall not continue. Listen to me. I, you know, I want to think for a moment like Saul. There was going to be a battle. And before the battle, there was, good, there was this necessary offerings they had to make. And, you know, seven days, seven days, Saul, some of the prophets said, I will come. And on the seventh day, you know, it was 9 a.m., it was 12 noon, and Samuel was not there. And before you knew it, people were getting destroyed, getting scattered and worried about. Saul was panicking because on one side, people were disconnecting from him. On another side, the army of the Philistine was building up on the other side to attack them. It's just like where you are. Have you been in that state before? Why you are trying to make money? You don't know which is important. In trying to make money, you don't want to get sick. In trying to not get sick, you are losing money. That's where people are today. And Saul was under a lot of pressure. He was, on, he was at a stressful point. And before you knew it, Saul began to take decisions that began to destroy things. 
And I'm saying that to you today because if you're under stress and you don't know how to stop stress, you will begin to take decisions that will destroy things. There are people already that are listening to me right now. You've already said something that destroyed something. Some of you are just, some of you, you are so stressed. You are exhausted. That's what you are. I know some mothers that are exhausted having to manage the dynamics of this season and they're exhausted but they cannot stop doing what they're doing. I, I know people that are saying that, can I sustain the space of my life? That this space is incredibly different and incredibly fast and they're asking those questions but the question is this when you stay in stress if you do not manage it well then negative things begin to happen to you the first thing I want to notice is this stress is bound to show up stress is bound to show up the second thing is this stress always has a trigger so if you're going through a stressful season i understand that you'll be like oh my god you know it's this season but look into your life stress is very consistent see stress has a trigger for saul it was two things number one people were scattered away from him and opposition was building on the other hand but this is what i want to say to you when you do not know how to manage stress, stress is going to motivate you to make foolish decisions. All of a sudden, what do you see? Do you see this man saw, intelligent, anointed man? He, he knew that as a king, his place was never to offer offerings unto God. That was the place of the priest or the prophet. All of a sudden, because he was stressed out, he began to make terrible decisions. There are, people, there are cases I've heard about people that have murdered someone. Sometimes, you know, you, you hear stories about people that killed their spouse and you say, what happened? And it was a moment of anger, a moment of deep stress. They took that action and ended their life. And though they did not mean it, that life was ended. There are people that have resigned their job just because they went through stress. There are people also that, you know, they've made very bad financial decisions because of a stressful moment. And I'm saying to you, there are people that have even abandoned God's word. They say that, you know what, I'm tired of praying, I'm tired of the word of God because I've not seen the change I desire. And they abandon it and they do not realize this, that See, the only way faith will work is this. Faith works with patience. What is patience? Patience is the ability to be consistent even when the outcome is not what you desire. That's what patience is. Patience is the ability to be consistent even when what you see is not what you desire. And I'm saying this to you today because if you're stressed out, what you need to do is to begin to let God speak into your heart. Maybe you have to pause for a little while and just say, let your living water flow over my soul. Holy Spirit, come and take control of the situation because there's something that God wants to speak to you. Why am I saying this to you today? Because if you are in a place of stress, your stress is going to contaminate your faith. Do you know that when something is contaminated, it's not as potent as it used to be? All of a sudden, you used to be a man full of prayer. You used to be such a generous giver. You used to be someone that was given to given. But when you allow stress in, because stress comes with fear, all of a sudden, all those things become paralyzed. And that's why you do not want to live in fear. Fear will cause you to lose focus. That's what will happen. You will, all of a sudden, you have all those goals for 2020. But when you become stressed out, you begin to lose focus let me give an example All of, look at the story of Samuel of Saul Saul knew that the priest should offer the sacrifice to God but as soon as he lost focus on who to please that in the end of it my desire is to please God not to please man as soon as men were going away from him bam he entered into a trap his focus shift to men because he went into stress if you allow stress into your life what will happen is that the very vital things you care about those things you will forget them and you will put your focus on things that are temporal and can disintegrate and that's why you don't want stress to come in as a matter of fact this is what the bible says the bible says in quietness and confidence shall your strength be as christians if you stay in a place of, str of stress, you will not be able to unnest the depth of God's power. You will not be able to release the depth of God's glory in your life. And that's why the Bible says one of the things you have to do is this. If things are shaking on the right, if things are shaking on the left, the Bible says stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Stand still is not just a physical motion. He says you go into a place and you begin to experience stillness. I know you have lost a lot of money. Money. 
from the downfall. I know that people have been sacked. I know you could have lost your job. Your marriage is under pressure. It says stand still. What do you mean? You shut out the information. You shut out everybody. You take time together by yourself. You bring to God in, in prayer and release your goals and say, God, I don't know how these things will happen, but as I stay here in a place of stillness, I will see the salvation. Salvation means deliverance. He says, stand still and see the deliverance of God. The deliverance of God is not going to come from you being in a state of panic. The deliverance of God is not going to come from you being in a state of fear. It's going to come in a place of full assurance, knowing that God can come through for you. Somebody say hallelujah. Your ability to act on God's word, you know, despite the situation, is going to determine a lot. You know, in this season, you know, I, I, you know someone asked me, he said, in this season, just like I did earlier on, he says, why are you asking people to still give Titan offering? And I said to him, I said, you don't understand how this feels. We're not asking people to give because the church needs money. Of course, the church has bills to pay. But the thing is this, giving is our worship. It's not about how we feel. But the question is, also, but things are really bad. And I said this, if before you were given out of, you know, convenience, that was not given by faith. Give, what is giving by faith? Giving by faith says, I'm giving not because it's convenient. I'm tithing not because it's convenient. I'm giving because of the faith I have in God's word. And let me tell you something. Some of you now are beginning to really hoard and save, and it's wonderful. But if you save out of fear, your savings might be ruined. Why? You must save out of faith that God is bringing a future opportunity for me to take advantage of these savings. So what does that mean? Even when I give, I'm not giving out of fear. So there are people that are withholding giving, and the reason why they are withholding giving is this. They are just afraid. No, sir. You don't want fear to paralyze you. A person of faith is able to give because he understands that the Lord shall supply all of my needs. That God is going to come through for me. So faith finds itself generous and fear finds itself withholding back. Maybe because in this season you've not been able to tithe. You say, I'm just saving. I understand. You must save and you should save. But do not save out of fear. Do not not give out of, out of fear. Do not not pay your tithe out of fear. Do not fast out of fear. Listen, whatever you want to do, make sure that fear is not the motivating factor. What should be the motivating factor? The faith of God. That's what the Bible says. He said, the just shall walk, shall walk by faith and not by sight. I'm not moving by the things I feel. I'm moving by the word of God. Somebody say, Hallelujah. I say stress will cause people to lose focus. You must be careful lest stress contaminates your faith. You must be careful. Look at Saul. Saul knew what was right. As soon as he was stressed, he forgot everything. Question, how is your prayer life? I just want to ask you. Are you still able to speak God's word? So I say, what do you mean by that? In Genesis 1, when God saw darkness, God did not call darkness. God said what he wanted. God said, let there be light. I know you've seen a lot of challenges in your finances, a lot of challenges in your marriage, maybe challenges in your health. Are you speaking what you are seeing or you're speaking what you want to see? The Bible says, faith color the things that be not as though they were. This is what he says. He said, our God who calls, oh my God, hallelujah. He said, God that calls for light out of darkness. What does that mean? Out of the scarcity you can call for prosperity. Out of the sickness you can call for health. Out of the sadness you can call for joy. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. Hallelujah. I understand what people are saying but listen to me. I'm not a natural person. I'm supernatural. Don't expect me to respond to situation and circumstances the way your friend respond to it. No. I have the faith of God on the inside of me. I have the Holy Ghost on the inside inside of me. I have the life of God on the inside of me. My response is different because I'm not just natural. I am supernatural. So when men say there's a casting down, I look and say there's a lifting up. When men say it is over, I say it's a new beginning. Someone says, how can you say that? Isaiah said by the word of God, he says, say unto the righteous, it shall be well with you. Listen to me. This year looks as if it's over, but it's not over. Why? 
weeping may endure for a night. He said, but joy comes in the morning. Someone says, but I've lost so much money. My mind is going through a crisis. I really feel depressed. The Bible says, our light affliction is but for a moment. Hallelujah. If I were you, I would begin to sing and jump and shout. Why? My light affliction is for a moment and is working for me an exceeding weight of glory. Glory to God. What will stress do to you? Stress will amplify the negative narrative. That's what it's going to do. It's going to amplify the negative narrative. As a matter of fact, stress will block you from experiencing joy and peace. Yeah. Stress is going to block you. And you know what the Bible says? The Bible says, with joy, with joy, waters out of the well of salvation. Meaning this, the way we will come out of trouble, the way we are going to have deliverance, the way we are going to have answers prayers is that with joy, we sustaining joy, we are able to draw waters. Waters means that we are going to create pathways of salvation. But the thing is this, once you allow stress to block your joy, you would notice that you will not have the strength to do what you have to do to come out of it. There are many of you that have gone, there are many people listening to me right now. Maybe your marriage is going through a very tough time. And the major thing is this, you think it's your partner, you think it's this, it's that other girl, it's that other guy, it's the money issue. But the thing is this, bitterness has set in. I know the worst about bitterness, this is very big for me. When you become bitter, you open the door to the devil. And some of you are bitter because there is a way that your wife has treated you in time past. There is a way your husband is treating you right now. You're bitter because things have not just worked well in the business. And some of you are like, oh, you know, you're just angry. And bitterness leads to entitlement, and that's very destructive. And that's why you see when people are angry, they say, like, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care. And when they say things like that, that's a part of destruction. And I'm saying to you that you have to come out of it. And how do you help not to be bitter? By sustaining the joy of the Lord. The Bible says this, that I should be careful. Let, any of, let, let the root of bitterness develop in any of you. And what? And that root will stagnate and stab the grace of God. If you find yourself in a place where the grace of God is not made available, you need to ask yourself, did bitterness come into my heart? Because once bitterness comes into your heart, bitterness begins to disconnect you from God's grace. Many of you are here, you are trying to do a transaction. And as you move on, you've talked with some principal level, the center approval. But to move that transaction to execution, it seems as if there's a withdrawing power. It's obvious to you that grace is not there. What you have to ask yourself first is this. Is there any place where I have been bitter? Maybe in the press of this, someone was meant to give me capital and did not. And I stood up bitterness. You know why? Because the bitterness itself will come forth and begin to short circuit the power of God in your life. What do you do? You're going to a place of prayer today and say, Father, this thing, I don't want, something, I don't want the devil to inter interfere with it. I release the bitterness so that the, the flow of grace can be available in my life. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. The other thing, so, so stress would, would cause that. So the, so the question is this, you know, stress will cause that. It will block the flow of grace. You know, one of the concerns I had with the current COVID-19 is this. And I had to just shut down listening to social media because every time we listen to media, it was this and this and this. Guess what? I just saw the papers that with all the rioting going on in the U.S., that this is the first time in a day, because with all the rioting, people were saying that there would be a second wave because people have a lot of contamination because of masses are coming together. But for the first time in New York, there was no, corona, there was no new corona case. Do you believe that? And so I said, why do you think it's so? I just think that the riot took the attention of what? Of corona cases, and they began to look at something else, and because they could not hear or see that, the devil did not have something to use in their life to produce in their life. I'm saying this to you to know that the things your ears and eyes are gate, the more you are watching the news of economies crumbling, you are sowing seed into yourself. What you have to do, I'm telling you, this, I, this is practical news. This is not something, I, I, in fact, the politicians say that what's going on here? That's what they're asking for. How do you believe that? They say, 
Everybody stay in your house, the cases were multiplying. Everybody came out in mass, no social distancing, people together, touching each other, and there's no new case. Meaning that the moment that direction and focus was moved from the evil, moved to something else, the gateway changed. And because the gateway changed and had been locked, nothing will enter again. I'm saying so because if something is going to change your life this time, and you have to pay attention. If something is going to change, change the gateway, sir. There are things you must stop listening to. There are things you must stop watching. And I say it this way. Whatever you don't want, you don't watch. Whatever you don't want, you don't watch. The way you are watching the corona cases, you may be the next one. The way you are watching the economic meltdown, your business might be the next one after the statistics. The way you are reading the stories of divorce and all those things about guys and girls, how nasty they are, it may happen to your marriage. Glory to God. The reason why stress will amplify narratives, negative narratives. So the question is this, so how, how, how do I get over stress? The first thing is this, it's by walking in God's guidance. I don't want to spend a lot of time today walking in God's guidance. So why and how does God guide us? Because that's what we're teaching today. The reason why I set all those time to talk about this is this. Because the place of stress, you cannot hear God. Your emotions are so unstable, you cannot hear God. So, oh God, speak, oh God, oh God, speak. No, no, no you can't hear God that way. The, the reason why you've not had the divine solution for your marriage is because you are so stressed about it. Your emotions are taking over you. The reason why you have not had God about your finance is that you are so stressed about it. So the first thing you have to do is to, why? Why does God speak to us? Number one, God's guidance is to prepare us for the future and for the unknown. That's one of the reasons why God speaks to us. God speaks to us to prepare us for the future and for the unknown. I mean, look at the story of Joseph. Joseph knew ahead of time that there will be famine. See, what he knew did not change the famine, but what he knew made him prepare for what was ahead. Guidance helps us prepare for the future. So, the more you have divine guidance, you can prepare. As a businessman, God can begin to guide you. One businessman told me, he said, the Lord spoke to me to take this position at this time. He says, and I took the position. He said, he said, God, bring your money and put it here. I took the position. He said, and guess what happened to me? He said, I began to make a lot of money. That's what guiding does. That's what guiding does. And you, 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 know, you know the big thing? You know the big thing about guidance? When, when you have guidance, you are protected. And, and for Joseph, how did God guide him? With dreams. With dreams. Let me say something about dreams. God uses dreams, but not all dreams are from God. God uses dreams, but not all dreams are from God. I want to take note of that. The second thing Gideon does is this. Guardians protect from evil and attacks. Guardian protects from evil and attack. Guidance protects from evil and attack. First Chronicles says that as they went from place to place, he, 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 he allowed no man to touch them. He rebuked kings for their sake. He said, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Because guidance provides for protection and provides for protection from evil and attack. Let me say this to you. You know, some of you are very smart, but let me say this to you. The safest place you can be is in the will of God. That's the truth. It's not a place. It's in the will of God. Why? It's not that in the will of God there are no challenges, but in the will of God you have God's protection. Guidance does that. And the third thing that guidance does is this. Hallelujah. Guidance provides great insights into financial, career, and what? Business opportunity. I love the way the Bible says it. Isaiah 48 verse 17. He says, I am the Lord your God who teaches you how to profit. That is the power of guidance. Let me tell you something. Peter had been an expert fisherman, ran a huge fishing business, had boats and people working for him. But he never knew that you could find something in the fish more valuable than the fish. He never knew that was possible. I'm saying the only way he knew that was possible was because Jesus Christ said, when well, you cut the fish, open the mouth. Let me say this to you. I'm saying this to you. One of the prayers you have to pray as a businessman is this. Lord, 
open up my business to me. Let me see what is more valuable in my business than what I'm currently doing. The reason why is this. The Bible says the way God made everything. The Bible says every seed bears another seed inside. That means in your current business, there's another business inside. And guess what? What is inside most times is even more valuable than what you are doing. I'm saying this to you in a very powerful way today. So, Peter had fished all his life. He never knew that there was something inside the fish. You will go to God with your consulting business and say, Father, this is what I'm going to. And let me tell you something. In this era where there's, a, where there's digitalization of businesses, you say, Father, show me. And when God shows you, there will be one dimension in that business that will lead you into more profit than what you have been doing before. But that's the work of guidance. That's the work of guidance. This is the way David said in Psalm 23. He said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He what? He makes me lie down in what? In green pastures. Did you notice? It was not the sheep's work to look for green pastures. It was the shepherd's work to look for, to flew for green pastures. My job is that when he finds green pastures, I can just be obedient to lie down in green pastures. That's my job. But I need to know and trust him with it that this can happen. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Oh, glory to God. Someone says, um, you know, um, um, my business. And let me say something to you. Most businessmen, let me tell you something. Most business and career people, the problem is the way they pray. When they pray, they say, Father, please bless in Jesus' name. And what they really expect is this. That from the outside, God will just do something. Most of the time, when God wants to answer your prayer about business, career, and finances, God begins to work on you. It begins to work on your mind. It begins to open your eyes. But because you've not trained yourself for your eyes to be open, you don't see anything. So when you go to God in prayer and say, Lord, I want to increase my finances, as you persist in prayer, as in that process, in that where you are praying after your prayer, the Lord will begin to allow some thought float into your mind, and that will begin to open the door for you. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. So how do you begin to follow the divine leading? Um, and how do you start stop stressing? The first thing about stressing is this. Identify the cause of the stress and address it. One of the major causes of stress is uncertainty. And uncertainty can be addressed by getting clear direction. One of the major sources of stress, what, let me say this quickly. One of the major sources of stress is unhealthy comparison. You look on Facebook, you look on Instagram, you look at some turnover another company had, and you begin to kill yourself. Listen to me. We are age mates, but we are not grace mates. That, that's the truth. You just have to calm down. Life is not a sprint. It's a marathon. Bubba, calm down. Sister, calm down. The fact that God did it for him is the proof that yours is coming. That's the proof that yours is coming. Hallelujah. And the other thing is this. It, you cannot reduce your stress... You can reduce, let me say it this way, you can't reduce the stress in your life until what? Until you control the thoughts you have. Glory to God. You can reduce the stress in your life until you control the thoughts you have. And the third thing is this, learn to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And that's why throughout this month I'm teaching about guidance. Uh, you know, very powerful, on Tuesday, you need to join us for the midweek service, Tuesday and Wednesday. See, why? Someone says, what do you mean to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit? This is what it means. When you're sensitive, number one, I have a lot of faith, so I have a lot of expectation. That's what it means to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. That's what it means to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Firstly, what you need to know about God's guidance is, number one, the Bible says in the book of Psalm 119, it says, thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. And it also says in the book of Proverbs, it says, um, the spirit of the man is the candle of the Lord that searcheth the inward part of the belly. What does this mean? It says, man's spirit is God's candle. What does that mean? Number one, God does not lead you by your senses. Your senses means you're seeing, you're tasting, you're feeling. God leads you by your spirit. Every Christian is being led by his spirit. If you trust your senses, you will get into trouble. You, sometimes. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. So God leads us through the spirit. So someone says, okay, how, how do I get God to lead me? So the first place to start from is that it's from the word of God. Last week I shared a scripture with you. That when Jesus appeared to disciples in Luke chapter 24. 
Bible says this, as he was, you know, as he was talking to them, as he was talking to them, he says their heart was burning. Ah, their heart was burning. My brother, you need, to under, you, you need to understand the operation of the Holy Spirit. That's why in the New Testament, this is where Paul said, Paul said, quench not the Spirit. What does that mean? When you want an answer from God, watch this. This is the thing. Let me tell you the thing. Most of you always say that, ah, if I need a business solution, how does Bible study help? This is how it helps. You go into your daily Bible study and say, Father, just speak to me. As you're reading the Bible, as you're reading the Bible, as you're reading the Bible, you know, as you're reading the Bible, naturally in the Bible, nothing can address your situation naturally. But because the Bible is the God of God, as you're reading, wisdom will emanate from the Bible. I'll give an example. One of the stories I heard about Pastor Deboe was this. He, had, he was doing a PhD thesis. And the way the mathematic PhD thesis, thesis works is this. One, the, the, the problem, the mathematical problem, nobody knows if it has a solution or an answer. So if it has a solution, you have to prove it. If it's not solvable, you have to prove it. So he ended up with, I think, 24 quadratic equation on one question. He says, as was in his Bible one day, and he had been on this for maybe three or six months, I can't remember the time. He said, just read the Bible, what the Bible says, and the Red Sea parted Tida and Hida. And something just occurred to him. These 24 equations, why not divide them into two? 12 on this side, 12 on the other side. He said, as he divided it, it was just obvious how there could be a pathway. He did not see equation in the Bible, but as he opened it, wisdom came out. That's what I'm saying. A certain businessman was sharing with me, was sharing with me just today. He said, he said this to me. He said, in the month of, in the, I think it was maybe the month of April thereabout, or May, he said, our, our deposit, the financial institution, just went down. He said, I just went to God in prayer. What should I do? This is the power of guidance. He said, when I read the Bible, one of the things I noticed was this, that God forgave us in advance and blessed us in advance. He said, what does this mean? And the idea came to him. All the people that have deposit with you, even though their interest is not due, send them their interest as a date. He said, as soon as he sent them their interest, the, the, what happened to them, that all of a sudden the sales value, the deposit value just began to go up. Just an idea that came out of God's word. I'm saying to, to you, this to you to know, if you want to hear God's word, just go. Read with expectation. Let the question be your heart. Read with faith. Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. As Jesus was speaking to them, the disciples said something. They say, our heart was burning. And I want to focus on that. What does it mean when they say our heart was burning? I was reading the Bible, but as I was reading, there was a place that was catching my attention. This is how God speaks to you, my brother and sister. Let me close with this. As you are reading the Bible, you read, 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 all of a sudden, one verse just seemed to be touching you. You don't know why. There's an attention drawn to it. There's a connection you have. My brother, what you do is that you pause. Begin to pray in the spirit. You zoom in on that verse. You know why? Your spirit is reaching a certain depth. And the way it works is this. Until you pay attention, you cannot get deeper. That's why. Until Moses turned aside to see the bush, he could not hear the voice. You have to turn aside to see the burning bush and the voice of God will speak. The problem is that most of us are so distracted. Going up and about. Most of us are stressed out. And that's why you need to kick the stress out. After this meeting, you go and find a place to pray. And shut the door. It might be two or three hours. And say, I just want somebody to come out. Because once again, the burning bush is burning. I'm telling you, the burning bush is burning right now. And it's looking for a man that will turn aside. The Bible says, as soon as he turned aside, he says, God spoke to Moses. And you know the first thing he told him? He said, take off your shoes. Why? Your shoes means your mentality. He says, that's the way you have stepped on life. That's where you've walked. He said, take off your shoes. When you get to that place, you remove your ideology and say, Lord, nothing of mine, all that is yours be done. And when you do that, the voice of God will come down to your spirit. Your life will never be the same again. Let's pray. Hallelujah. And Father, we thank you. Lord, I'm praying for everyone today. That will you please help them to sense and recognize the leading of God in their spirit. Let peace fill their soul. 
every stress that made them not hear the voice of God, we cancel it. In Jesus' name, amen.